Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Honda, and I'm checking out a 2017 Honda CRV LX. Now, this is the base model with no options basically, so this is a really basic vehicle as far as the trim levels of the 17 Honda CRV, but you get a lot of features and it's a very comfortable and roomy vehicle. So, let's go ahead and check it out. This CRV is sitting on 23565 R17 hand cooked tires wrapped around 17 inch alloy wheels with a two tone design. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc brakes in the front and solid disc brakes in the back. The name of this color is Lunar Silver Metallic. Checking it out. Now check out the gloss black here on the grill. That's interesting. You also have the, uh, the chrome reflecting back at you like a mirror. Actually reflecting back at me. Then you have the, uh, the flat black at the bottom here on the front. Has an LED daytime running light here at the bottom, right in here. And then the halogen powered low and high beams are in a reflector for the high beam and a projector system for the low beams. Let's take a look on the inside. Check out these handles. It's like a matte black. Here's the inside of the passenger door. Soft to the touch, cloth, armrest here. Then you have the uh, plastic, hard plastic surfaces here and a kind of like a, uh, it's, not a, it's not a metallic, but it's a metallic looking accent there in the center. Then you have a soft to the touch surface here on the top a pocket in the front as well as a bottle holder there's your threshold area this is just a piece of plastic here there's no uh, seal plate manually adjusted cloth seats here for the passenger side and they're like a gray color a little bit reflective kind of when the light shines on it kind of looks a little silver it's pretty interesting Right, pretty good amount of leg room here in the front. Has this little pad here on the side. It's not soft, but I can imagine maybe the higher trim levels have a soft pad there. Then you have that more of that metallic accent, soft to the touch dash here in this area, lockable glove compartments, and really good size, all smooth plastic on the inside. Taking a look here in the back. Now the back door, similar styling, it has the soft of the touch down here, not up here. And you have the storage pocket, and here's your threshold area. Pretty much a bench seat, but it does fold down in a 60-40 split fashion. Let's check out the armrest, it has some cup holders in it. it. Does have the latch system for car seats. Almost a completely flat floor back here too, check it out. Just a very slight hump in the center. And you have some uh, air conditioning or climate control vents here. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle. Has a little shark fin antenna at the top. The spoiler here at the top with the third brake light. There's the washer and wiper combination of LED and standard bulbs here for the taillights looking pretty nice backup cameras kind of hidden right under here a little bit offset from the center there's a single exhaust here on the right side Alright, let's take a look at the cargo area. There's a little button just under here. You just push it. 
and it releases the uh, the latch and then you lift it up all right so i lowered one of the seats so you can get an idea of the cargo capacity how it's increased when you start folding seats down and of course you can fold down one or the other to you know accommodate for a combination of cargo or passenger depending on your needs at the time so this is a cargo space and it's pretty good size i mean you have some tie downs on all four corners uh, two sources of light which is fantastic you also have the ability to lower the seats by just pulling this like so and now the front seat wasn't in the way it'd go all the way down but you i think you get the idea there's a cargo mat that you can lift up and then you lift this little cover here and this is where your spare tire and tools are located and it has a little funnel back here which I'll show you what that's for in a minute of course you can utilize some of the space for cargo space if you want I think that would be okay I won't tell anybody if you do anyway the fuel door is lockable and it is on the driver's side which is convenient and some people argue safer and it's a capless design now that little funnel i showed you this is for if you need to use a gas can only generally you just put the pump the nozzle in there at the pump at the gas station and pump your gas and you're good to go it does have a little bit of a seal here to keep things out uh, but generally it's not a big deal but this helps out with you know of course having to deal with the cap while you're uh, pumping gas but also if you don't tighten your cap then the check engine light turns on and all that good stuff so this just eliminates that whole problem this is what your key looks like and it's pretty basic in the uh, the low trim level here pretty basic key it does have the lock and unlock button and the ability to open up the trunk and a panic button now this will just pop the trunk i guess it's not a power lift gate or anything so um, but basically it's just like uh, the any other vehicle basically that has a, a key you just put it in and start it up here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat now you notice that the floor mat hooks in place in two places unlike the other side which doesn't hook in at all because it's a little bit of a safety issue if the floor mat moves around on you and, and ties up underneath the pedals so this is uh, securing the floor mat in place. Of course, you can upgrade to rubber mats if you want to, which is I, I think is recommended. There's your accelerator and brake pedal. You also have a pretty good sized footrest here on the left side. Nice place to put your foot while you're driving. That's a must for me, by the way, in case anybody was wondering. Okay, so let's take a look under the hood. Okay, to open up the hood, there's a little latch right in here, a little bit to the left of center. And you just move it to the right and lift the hood up it's not very hard to lift the hood up and there it does require a prop so you can see a little prop right there and it goes right up here where this little arrow is pointing now i don't see another spot some hondas have another spot for it to go to where it lifts the hood up higher this one doesn't look like it has that but anyways check it out you can actually see some of the engine here which is nice uh, your exhaust is out the front and your intake is in the back of your four-cylinder engine 2.4 liter four-cylinder 184 horsepower engine Now it's paired to a CVT automatic transmission You can see it has a little battery there and the struts strut tires look like they're kind of braced with the unibody structure kind of help stabilize you also have a uh, insulated firewall back there here's the inside of the driver's side door it's just like the other side really except for it has a few more buttons so here's your power window buttons but look at that the driver special they have an automatic so it's one touch down and one touch up goes up and down pretty quick too there's your door lock controls you can also lock out the the other windows so like say if you have uh, children in the back you don't want them playing around with the windows you can lock that out door lock controls your side mirrors are adjusted here you just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad manually adjusted seats for the driver 
but like I said, they're special, so they have to have something a little bit different from the passenger, and they do. They have a raise and lower the seat. So you can just kind of do that number, and it'll raise and lower the seat while you're sitting in it or while you're out. Right in here, there's a little storage pocket, and it kind of dips down a little bit once it goes in. So I guess like putting change or whatever, it's not going to kind of fly out while you hit the gas. And this is to reset your tire pressure monitor system uh, when you rotate the tires or change the tire or whatever. And then you can turn the traction control off if you need to in case you need to spin tires. Uh, if you're stuck in the snow or whatever, you can do that number. The steering column, it telescopes and it tilts. So there's the articulation with that. And then you lock it in place with this lever. Okay, let's take a look here on the inside. And Hondas have pretty much always been very comfortable and roomy, even with more of a compact type vehicle. And this one's no different. I mean, I have places for my knees to go into and just plenty of leg room here. I mean, I could put, I'm six feet tall, so just kind of give you an idea. But, you know, always, always comfortable in a Honda, it seems like. Okay, so let's take a look here at the steering wheel. Now it's a synthetic material that's super durable. And it has a kind of like a simulated leather texturing on the outside. Very good thickness and soft to the touch. I mean, it kind of, it's not like super soft, but it does give when you push into it. Has little bolsters here at the top. Okay, so you have some buttons here on the left side. This is your volume for your radio tune through your like your stations your tracks or whatever it happens to be that you're listening to at the time and speaking of that you can change the audio source like AM FM you know um, USB or whatever you can kind of change through your audio sources uh, without taking your hands off the wheel which is nice and speaking of that you have your Bluetooth controls down here where you can make calls receive calls and also use your voice recognition all while you guessed it keeping your hands on the wheel eyes on the road on the right side is your cruise control, so you just have to make sure you turn it on. You can set it, resume, and cancel here. Pretty simple. Your front and rear wiper controls are on the right side. On the left side is your turn signal, and it has your headlight controls. All right, so here's your gauges, and it's it's pretty interesting. It's kind of like has a combination of like digital and and real, you know, like physical gauges and stuff. So here on the left is your engine coolant temperature. On the right side is your fuel gauge. And right here in the middle, there's an RPM, that big dial on the outside. That's your RPMs. You can see as the needle moves, you also have like this little glowing light, which is nice. That's pretty neat. And then in the very center, you have a screen. So the screen gives you a di big digital speedometer, easy to read. You have the outside temperature, how many miles are on the vehicle. You also have your trips and a little miles per gallon indicator there. And you see these little light bars at the top. These will also change color to indicate what kind of gas mileage. Basically, if you're getting bad or good gas mileage in the moment while you're driving, kind of just kind of make it top of mind uh, whether you're getting good gas mileage or bad without actually having to interpret numbers and all this stuff. All right, so here's your center stack. And you see the vents here at the top. Soft to the touch dash and a speaker there in the top center, if you can see that. Can't really get the camera up there, but. All right, so here's your radio. And it's pretty basic. I mean, it looks really nice, and, but it's not a touch screen or anything. But it's real basic. There's not a lot of stuff to have to manage and try to find stuff. You just have the radio and the media buttons here. So the radio will just keep pushing that, and it'll cycle through uh, AM, FM, AM, F, like FM1, FM2, and AM. And then your media, if you have a device connected to a media source, say uh, Bluetooth, uh, USB, something, auxiliary input, that kind of stuff, uh, it will pop up here as a choice. Right now there's nothing connected, so it's nothing to show. So it's just as simple as that. You also have your phone button, and then you can mute the, uh, the radio there. Now it does have a traditional volume tuned through the stations. 
And you have this little button, menu button down here. You can push that and you can make selections by moving this dial. So you can go into your settings, you can push the center, and you can make selections here. And then it has a back button to get out of that. It goes back to your original screen that you were in. Then you have your presets here on the on the bottom, and then you can change through your tracks or, or uh, stations or whatever right here. So it's really easy to use, and um, it looks nice too. The nice blue background that kind of fades into the black. You have a nice easy to read clock, which is up, up in the corner, so you can find it easy with your eyes. Down here is your climate control. So you have your temperature, your fan speed, and where you want the air to blow. Let me turn the lights on, just so you get a little backlight. A little bit of backlights here just so you can see it a little bit better all right so you recirculate the air or you can have front and rear defrosters you know you know your different mode where you want the air to blow and you turn your air conditioning on and it has uh, the dial to change your fan speed and as you change change the temperature here on the left side you can see the indicator there on the screen all right you have electronic parking brake. You also have a brake hold feature to where once that's enabled, uh, when you stop at a stop sign and it's in drive, it'll still hold the brake for you until you push the accelerator, which is pretty interesting. First time I saw that, I was like, wow, that's I never thought about that kind of feature. And then you have the eco mode here to where you tell the vehicle you want the, the best gas mileage basically as you're driving. Now it's gonna cut back on your performance but you know at that that's the trade-off you know performance or fuel economy okay so here's the shifter it's right here in the center it's out of the way from the uh the center console it's kind of up here a little bit and it's kind of like a rubber texture kind of a little bit of a rubber texture and it has the uh i don't know that's pretty normal there so let's go ahead and put it in reverse take a look at the backup camera and my camera is actually making little lines on it, but that's not visible with my naked eyes. But you also have the ability to change the uh, the view. So you have little different selections there by using the button below the, the choice. All right. Neutral. There's drive. That's your normal drive position. Then you have kind of a sport mode. Uh, this is where you tell the vehicle basically you want more performance at this point and then you have a low range this is a CVT uh, it doesn't have traditional gears it has speed ratios so you can put it in this low range so that way it keeps it at a high speed ratio so it uses more engine braking if you're going down hills and stuff like that all right so there is a storage pocket here with a removable mat you have a 12 volt power supply there's some cup holders. Here's a little storage tray, um, but it's movable, so you can move it out of the way. And this storage pocket here, see if you can see in there, there's actually a USB port and a 12 volt power supply. Now the USB port, uh, you can charge your cell phone. It's a one amp charger, but also that's also to play music through the sound system. Now, let's just kind of do this number here. Let's move on here because there's some more stuff under here I need to show you. This is the armrest, and it's pretty good size. You could share it, maybe share it with your passenger. You lift it up, and it's a cloth material, by the way. You lift it up, and you notice that this little tray that I slid back is this whole, has this barrier. And then when you push it back, this tray stays there. So if you put some stuff there, it's going to kind of, you know, you can move it back and forth to access stuff below it. Or you could basically kind of put it in this position and just take it out. So it has these little uh, pieces on the ends that will compress. So you can pull it out and get it out of, the, out of the way when you don't want to use it. And then you have this really large compartment underneath that you can see. So you can utilize this space under it if you want to with that tray in place or you could take it out and have even more space now this when you close this this front part is going to be open with that in there without that in there but that might be easier to get especially larger things 
uh, women might want to put a purse in here, you know, put your purse in there, you close that down, it's right there, you can access a portion of it here in the front. So, you know, it's pretty, pretty interesting the way they have uh, this little tray for small stuff, and then you can just literally just take that out, and then you have this wide open spot. All right, so the rear view mirror is, has a manual day and night mode. You have some tap lights up here. You can have them turn on the interior lights with the door or off. You have a place to put some shades up in here and it has like a foam material on the inside to protect them. And then you have a conversation mirror where you can keep an eye on the backseat drivers. It's pretty awesome. There's a mirror there. Let's see what the mirror on the passenger side looks like. Same thing, no lights. All right, let's look at the visibility before it gets too dark. All right. Okay, so you have that window in the back and then you have the, the windows on the side. Now I have one, actually I have both seats down, but uh, I think you kind of get the idea. The headrests are gonna line up with the pillars back there, so they're not really gonna cause too much of an issue as far as the visibility. But, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, there's a lot of glass to look out of, so that's good. Of course, the backup camera helps out with it just, you know, backing up in, in general and stuff like that. All right, so this has just been a, you know, a quick overview of the 2017 Honda CRV in the basic trim level. I want to do a really basic one uh, so you can get an idea of what the you know your starting point is and then you can add to it if you want to add some stuff uh, things that you want you can get the different trim level that matches your needs or add options that kind of stuff so thank you for watching and thank you to East Coast Honda here in Myrtle Beach South Carolina for allowing me to show off an awesome vehicle and I'll send you see you guys next time let's take a look at the window sticker so you can use the pause button to get some information off of it if you so choose Not too shabby. 32 on the highway, 26 in the city with a combination of 28.